like, she like the Virgin Mary. And she was stripping like she was dancing to no quarter. And I woke up from that shit, I go, I'll never do heroin again. But I'm lying. I did in New York one time at a gay bar up in the third floor, Ramrod. Fuck it. You gotta take a chance. Columbus did, right? <laughs> Welcome to This Is Not Happening presents One Crazy Night. So this is what we do. Uh, we're a bunch of comedians uh, tell stories about a similar subject. So this is just One Crazy Night. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend and yours, Mr. Joey Diaz, everybody. One more time for Ari to put this together. So all messed up, you know, like half of the motherfuckers in here have been all fucked up, all right? Uh, and something's always fucking us up. For me, it was 30 years of just drugs. And, and no fucking JK here. We got down, bitch. All right, so when he called me up and he's like, hey, I want you to do the story, I did like, I, I got high, right? I smoked a joint, right? And I, and I made like a drug tombstone, right? Like, like acid, you know, 79 to like 85. And then I did like Quaaludes, you know, 80 to 87, and you know, THC crystal. And I, went, and then, you know, I did blow for a long time. Towards the end, in 2005, I was fucked up. And I really wanted to quit. I wanted to quit at the 25 year mark. You follow me? But I, I just, I couldn't do it. Like once I hit that centennial, I had to fucking do something. But I had too much pride to go to a rehab. There was a rehab on Hollywood Boulevard next to Robeck. I went down there for like a week under an alias. But then they started snooping around. I had to get the fuck out of there, right? In the old days, you could push an alias like a motherfucker. After 9-11, it's tough out there for a pimp. You know? So fuck it. They saw that. Jose, what? Fuck you, motherfucker. It's fucking anonymous. What's with the questions, cop fucker? So. I'd done heroin before, right? Like when I was like 17, I, I stole this thing with Didi Cantero, this little fucking crazy Cuban kid. We stole like this thing where you put dishes in. It was brand new. The people left it in front of the people's houses. Me and Didi picked it up and walked five blocks to gun, gun, gun to Brown's house. If you ask me again, I'll knock you down, right? This fucking guy, he was like the neighborhood loan shark. Like if you stole something, he'd buy it from you. So I go over there and I'm like, you know, I want to sell you this. He's like, you drop it off and come back in two hours. He looked like Tony Iommi. The guitar player from Black Sabbath. And he always entered the door with a robe and his underwear showing like the fucking dude in Boogie Nights. He was, he, was, he was creepy, but not really. You know what I'm saying? Like, you had to take a chance with this motherfucker, right? So he goes, come back in two hours. I go in there, we're rocking, we're talking shit, right? He goes, I got your $60. So then he's like, hang out, man. I want to do business and hang out with you. You seem like a cool dude. So I'm sitting there. He's like, you want to do some heroin? At the time, I had done everything, right? Like, uh, you know, Coke, I had done like uh, Tuminols, I had done like uh, THC Crystal, AKA Gorilla Biscuits, AKA fucking Elephant Tranquilizers. <laughs> so I'm like, fuck it, if you want. At this time, I was a fucked up kid, you know, I had no direction. I said, fuck it, I'll do the heroin, right? And I did this gag or this white Chinese fucking heroin. I heard like Chinese music in the background. Ding, 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 I do this thing, and all of a sudden, it's like the fucking room starts spinning, and I got to puke, and I puke, and I, and I pass out, and I think I'm dead. But I heard, like, No Quarter by Jimmy Page, the live shit, live from the garden. And that's how I knew I was alive. So I got up on my hands and knees, and I sat with the puke on my face, and fucking Jimmy was blasting. I thought, at the five-minute mark, if you listen to that, uh, the song remains the same. Fucking Jimmy Page drops it like a fucking soldier, especially when you're on heroin. You get the tingles up and down your back, right? And it was on. I felt that heroin, the warmth from God. Like, that's what it is. Your balls are warm. You want to come, but it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, you want to come, but fuck it. It wouldn't be good enough as the warmth you're feeling in your body, my ears. And I could see all these, like, I wasn't hallucinating, but it was so warm. I was feeling like I seen every woman that I ever seen in my life and made contact with. Not sex. I was too young for that. Like, I seen the lunch lady there, Mrs. Sabatino. <laughs> I seen the lady who gave me birth, you follow me, who smacked me in the ass. I seen the fucking nun who I tackled in the fourth grade. I seen all these bitches in this fucking dream. I seen my mother, then I seen like the Virgin Mary, and that's when I knew I was fucked up. And she was stripping like she was dancing to no quarter. And that's fucked up right there, right? And I had already made my confirmation. I was fucked up right there. I was, I was fractured as a Catholic already at that age, right? 
So that was it. When I woke up from that shit, I go, I'll never do heroin again. But I'm lying. I did it again in the halfway house in 94, right? And I did it in New York one time at a gay bar up in the third floor, Ramrod. That's what you do when you're up there. Fuck it. You gotta take a chance. Columbus did, right? You gotta do heroin at a gay bar. Fuck it. That's how you know and shit. You're over there dancing, looking at the gay dudes and shit. Driving them fucking bananas and shit, anyway. So it's 2005, I'm living in Hollywood and I'm doing a fucking grandma blow a night sometimes. That was like a bad night. By eight o'clock every night I'd be watching TV and I get this pain in my fucking soul. And I get, my bones would hurt. I, I, I couldn't hear the TV like I wanted to watch something on TV and I couldn't. And I get in my car and I take the ATM. I lived on Schrader and I go all the way to Sunset and fucking uh, Hollywood Rouse, Rock and Roll Rouse is an ATM right there. And I swear to my fucking mother's grave, I wouldn't stop for a red light. I didn't give a fuck. I didn't give a fuck. I parked right in front of it, put my hazard lights on. Fuck it, like a doctor. I run without a handicap stick. I don't give a fuck. I take out 60 bucks, and right there, I called a drug dealer. I had a couple of them. The Armenian only came out on the weekends. The black guy was there every night, and the Mexican motherfucker was there like four nights a week. It depended on what shift he was working. So I, I knew all their shifts and shit. So I would go buy a gram, go home, do it in the fucking garage, go upstairs. Make believe I was shitting and jerk off in the bathroom and look out the fucking window. That was the extent of my fucking addiction at the time. Then at 2 o'clock when it wear off, I called another drug dealer and so they wouldn't know my addiction. Right? Now, was I going to go to a fucking rehab? Fuck no. So I'm talking to a buddy of mine one day. After 9-11, he moved back to Newark. I go, so you're living with your mother? He's like 40-something. I go, so do you still do heroin? He goes, like, fuck you, yeah, every night. He goes, I cop down in Newark. I cop $7 bags of heroin. I go, send me a couple. Now... You ever have a conversation with somebody? And then you're like, you just try to be cool. You're like, yeah, count me in. Wrong fucking dude, right? <laughs> About a week later, I go to my mailbox and it's like in Crayola writing, you know. <laughs> like Joey, Coco, he spelled Coco wrong with two K's and shit. Diaz, right? And I'm like, what the fuck? No return address, right? I take it upstairs, I open it, and there they are. Three little fucking bags of H. White, that Chinese shit that the terrorists are bringing in like a motherfucker <laughs> by the day load with a picture of Obama on it, balls ass naked, smoking a joint and shit with a white chick licking his fucking nuts like a doctor, right? So I'm like, fuck it. So I'm, I'm doing the blow every night, so this Monday night, I go, fuck it, tonight's a different night. I'm doing like a little line of his H. And I usually, what I would do, I was fucking crazy. My girlfriend's great, she don't get high, so I would trick her. I go, you gotta go to bed, dog. You gotta get eight hours. <laughs> You're at that age. You need every fucking... Lane. Don't worry about me. I'm a fucking comedian. This is what I do. You got to go to bed right now. But while all this was going on, there was a cat population growing in my backyard. <laughs> and I had already adopted three of these little motherfuckers, right? And they, they had, the problem was they had two... They had the mama who was a dirty whore. And then they had two big cats that were slinging dick like, you know... They had the Siamese, the war... The, I called them the samurai. He had big black balls. And he was Siamese. I'm not kidding you. When he'd walk, he'd walk all fucked up. Like this guy fucking meant it. Never talked to me. Nine years. Never took a lobster. Nothing. He was a soldier. He just damn me down. Fuck you, bitch. You ain't buying my fucking love, cocksucker, all right? Then there was a the black and white one who was a big cat. And they were both fucking mama. So she kept having kittens. And then they would kill the kittens so she would... Stop ovulating and get back to fucking. This is how serious these motherfucking cats were, right? Now, how did I learn about this? You know, I did some reading on the internet. When you're doing coke, you stay up late night. And you do investigating, you follow me? So uh, she had the kittens, and they were beautiful. There were three Siamese kittens, and this one black and white dirty motherfucker, right? But the three Siamese, there's two girls and a boy, DJ. DJ was the best little cat in the world. They lived outside, and I'd step out in my backyard, and I'd go, DJ, and he'd come fucking running like a superhero. And the two little girls would come, and then that super bad, this little black and white would come, and I, they would all hang out around me. But super bad, the black and white one would take DJ and take him up trees and shit, and take him off the territory, would take him on summer by the YMCA. And I have to get soup bag going, one of these days I'm gonna fucking kill you, cocksucker, right? And I caught myself, even though I love the cats, I would never put a hit on a cat. But in my mind, I'm like, I'm gonna fucking kill this little fucking cat, right? I'm serious. And I love cats, don't get me wrong, but you know those cats that just get on your last fucking nerve. And you don't know how to do it, but you love animals too much, so you know you're just bullshitting yourself. So I'm like, one day he's just gonna get hit by a truck or something. Fuck him, that little cocksucker. Don't hang with him no more, DJ. And I was just waiting to bring DJ upstairs, and I had a, a chick that was gonna take the two Siamese's and then fuck Superbad. I didn't know what the hell was gonna happen to Superbad, right? So 
my addiction's getting worse and worse. And one night I get home, my, my wife is fucking, at the time she was my girlfriend, she's crying. And she's like, the fucking cat's outside, they're gonna die. I'm like, what the, what are you talking about? So we got the two girls, we brought them to the vet, and she adopted them out through Petco. And then I go, what are you gonna do with Superbad, that fucking mutt, and DJ, my baby? And she goes, well, I'm gonna bring him up. And I go, leave Superbad outside. Just leave him the fuck outside. That's how much I hated Superbad. <laughs> So I go out one night, and my rule was, people, this is how fucked up in my addicted mind. My rule was never to do coke in the house. It was bad luck. <laughs> I would always do it in the car. So by the time I got upstairs, I had a shit, and I'd run into the bathroom and hide. You follow me? That was the fucking plan. I had a plan. I was an organized cocaine type of motherfucker, right? <laughs> so this night, something happened. I had to go to the bathroom. I didn't have time. I ran upstairs. And when I got upstairs, my wife goes, in the bathroom, the two cats are in the bathroom. So I go in the bathroom, and I, I, I do the coke, and I'm looking at the both of them. I'm like, I don't even know why she fucking brought you up here. And I go back outside, and I do the coke, and I probably got some more, I don't know, no fucking story, and I went to bed. And when I got up, my wife woke me up in the middle of the night, and she goes, hey, I just want to tell you that fucking DJ died. And that was the Siamese I was going to die, right? And I, when she said it, guys, I fucking knew it was the coke. I fucking knew it. And I just said, do me a favor, close the door, and I cried a little bit, and I put the pillow, I put my sleep apnea mask on first. Then I went to fucking bed, right? And, yeah, whatever, sleep at me, whatever the fuck it is. I'm a fat dude, right? And then, so I'm laying there thinking, I finish my crying. I go, you know what? That little cat died because I brought the coke upstairs. Even if I fucking hate super bad, that motherfucker's not going to die up here because that's even more bad luck. So I went in there, I got on my hands and knees like a Catholic fucking soldier, and I said, God, if you save these fucking cats, this super bad who I can't stand, I'll never do coke again. And I like winked at him, like, right, whatever. <laughs> I said, God, don't let this motherfucker die. And I promise you, and like the first day I had the shitters, you know, and, but every day I would go in the bathroom and he'd live. Like by the fourth day, I was ready to fucking shoot myself. <laughs> I was ready just to shoot him and end it. I would go in there like, die. Don't you feel like dying yet? <laughs> it's over. You don't want to live. It's fucking terrible. Things are tough out there. Trust me. That was seven years ago, and I haven't done blow. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you how close I am with this filthy motherfucker that I love. Because if you go to my house and you look at my cats, and you look at him, you're like, mm. <laughs> He's like Marilyn on the Munsters. You follow what I'm saying, kid? I got good looking Siamese, and he's like black and white, and he got a little head and shit, but he's fearless. But I'll tell you how much that dude knew I made a promise for him, because at night, my other cats are cool, but they ain't that fucking cool. But at night, when I go in to my bedroom, I take my slippers off, I put my sleep apnea mask on, I put the fan on, and I lay down, and I pick the blanket up, and I go, super bad. And wherever the fuck this motherfucker is, you hear like, boom, you hear him hit the door, and he jumps next to me, and I put the blanket over him, and that's the end of the fucking night. He's still there, cocksuckers. Stay black. Thank Ari Shafir one more time. Put this together tonight. Hey, why don't you do the light? This YouTube clip gets better views and subscribe so you can see next week's story. And don't forget to leave a comment.